This is the notes for section 10.6, the volume of a sphere. Um, if you haven't done so already, make sure that you pause video and read 10.6 prior to continuing with these notes. Um, the first thing that I want to do is define what a sphere is. We, we, we skipped over that earlier in this lesson because we thought, or earlier in this course because we, we felt it would fit pretty well here. Um, all a sphere is, is basically a three-dimensional circle. When we talk about a circle, we say a circle is all points in a plane, the same distance from a given point, which we call its center. That distance, we call its radius. Well, when we look at a sphere, we're talking about all points in space that are the same distance from a given point, which we still call its center, and that distance is still called the radius. So instead of limiting the points to being all within one plane, we're saying that those points could be anywhere in space. So it's a three-dimensional equivalent to the two-dimensional circle. All right, so now that we've defined what a sphere is, I want to look at taking a sphere and intersecting it with a plane. If I take a sphere and intersect it with a plane, there's three things that could happen. The plane could just touch the sphere, in which case the intersection of those two things would be just a point. The second possibility would be the sphere intersecting the, the um, plane in such a way that we get a circle. So if you think about the two-dimensional aspect of that, the plane intersecting the sphere, that two-dimensional figure that I would get on the plane would just be a circle. Now, the only other thing that could happen would be as if the plane intersects the, um, the sphere in such a way that it divides it into two equal hemispheres or half a spheres. And, and that occurs when the, the intersection of the, um, the plane with the sphere contains the center point. Okay? If it contains the center point, then we call it the great circle. So anytime a plane intersects a sphere in such a way that we get um, the, the center is a part of that intersection, we say that we have the great circle for that sphere. Now, the great circle becomes important, especially when we look at mapping. If you're mapping something on a sphere, the, the shortest distance between any two points must be along, the, must be along a great circle. So, um, when when plane when when you're looking at uh, flying from one city to the next, we want to you know when you look at it on a flat map, it looks as though it's it's a curved distance from say Minneapolis to London. But if if we look at it on a sphere, it's just that we're following along a, a great circle to go from Minneapolis to London. Okay, the, the sphere volume formula then. So we can find the volume of a sphere by taking 4 thirds times pi times the cube of the radius. So we would write that like this right here. Volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now, in the book they go through and kind of show how to derive that. I'm not going to worry so much about that portion of of the lesson. Uh, it, I think it's of some interest. It's something that you'll explore a little bit more, quite a bit more when you get to calculus. But for right now, I want you to be able to use the formula for the volume of a sphere. Okay, let's take a look at example one here. It says, draw an example of a sphere with a radius of 18 millimeters and find the volume. Okay, so let's start by just drawing, when we draw a, 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 a sphere with a radius like that, what we want to do is just start by drawing a circle, something like this right here. And then what we want to do is we want to just draw in an example of the great circle so we can get an idea kind of of what that's going to look like. So I'm going to do something like this right here. And then as I come around the back side of the, the sphere, I'm going to put it dotted because we can't really see that. But then I'm going to put in a center. 
and I want to draw that radius going to the edge of the circle that I started out with. So if this is my radius, I'm going to label that as 18 millimeters. Okay? And that would be a good example drawing of that. Now we're going to find the volume of it. All right, to find the volume, then I'm going to start with my volume formula. Volume is equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed. And notice how for that volume formula, the only thing I need to know, just like with the circle, is I just need to know what the radius is. So I'm going to plug in 18 for r. So the volume is equal to 4 thirds pi times 18 raised to the third power. Now we can go ahead and put that into our calculator to find out what that volume would be. If we do that, we get 7,776 pi, or approximately 24,429. I'm just going to stick with the exact value, though, when we write this down. So we would write it like this, and then we, get, we don't want to forget about the millimeters cubed for that value. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look at number two here. It says, following example, uh, it, it, it's very similar to example one on page 630, so if you might want to read that first before going on. It says, a cone with a height of eight inches and a radius of three inches is topped with a hemisphere with a radius of three inches. Find the exact volume of the figure. So I've got a, just a little sketch over here of what that might look like. We've got the cone on the bottom, and then we have this hemisphere on top. Remember, a hemisphere is just a half a sphere. So what we want to do is we want to find the volume of each of those individually and add them up. So I'm going to find the volume of the cone here. And to do that, I know the volume of the cone is going to be equal to one-third the area of the base times the height. Okay. Well, the, the base of the cone, it says that we know it's a circle, and we know that the radius of that base is 3 inches. Therefore, if I think about the area of B, it's going to be pi r squared, which is equal to pi times 3 squared, or 9 pi square inches. Okay? Um, and then the height, we were told, is 8 inches. So I'm now going to plug that stuff in here. Volume is equal to one-third times 9 pi times 8. And we want to get the exact volume, so we want to leave this with pi in our answer. Well, if I take one-third times 9 pi, and that's 3 pi times 8, would be 24 pi. If you have trouble with that, you might want to do that on your calculator. So it would be one-third times 9 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24, so we have 24 pi cubic inches for the cone. Okay? Now we're going to find the volume of the hemisphere. So to find the volume of the hemisphere, I know it's going to be equal to, it's going to be equal to half of 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that's like 4 thirds pi r cubed divided by, or, or times 1 half, I should say. Well, if I take 1 half times 4 thirds, that's the same as saying uh, 4 six or 2 thirds pi r cubed. Okay? Well, we know that the, the radius of that is equal to 3, so it would be 2 thirds times pi times 3 cubed. Okay. 3 cubed is 27, and so we have 27 times 2 thirds, which would be equal to um, 2 thirds times 3 cubed, so that would be 18 pi. And once again, if you want to, you can do that on your calculator to see that that's 18 pi. And that would also be in cubic inches. And now if I'm going to find the volume of the whole thing, so that's, I'll put that right here. The volume of the whole thing would be equal to 24 pi plus 18 pi, which is equal to 
um, let's see, that would be 42 pi cubic inches. So that would be the volume of that whole figure. Okay, the final example here in your notes, uh, example, example number three, uh, I'm going to leave for class. If you want to give this a try, if you feel comfortable that you can try this one, especially those of you who are, are in a pretty good position with this stuff right now, you can go ahead and try this one, see if you can get it. We're going to talk about this one class, so I'll kind of go through it uh, at that point. Thank you.